This morning on CBS 2 News, the final scheduled hearing on the January 6th Capitol attack wraps up. Why lawmakers say former President Trump didn't do enough to stop the assault. Plus the search for the teen who fell into Lucky Peak Reservoir, it continues today. Why the recovery efforts may take days, even as law enforcement brings in more help. Plus, hoping to lend a hand to the Idaho Youth Ranch, how the fire there and that their Boise warehouse is taking a major toll. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. This is a live look of downtown Boise on this Friday, July 22nd, 2022. I'm Sarah Jacobson, joined by Vasily Varlamos. And Vasily, the good news, no triple digits for today, at least at least in Boise. We'll see how that pans out for everyone else. But tell me more about the weekend because a little cooler temperatures, but still going to be toasty out there. Yeah, for sure. It's going to be a toasty one in general, but we will get some cooler temperatures for sure. Right now, temperatures are floating in the high 60s range throughout the Treasure Valley. 69 here in Boise right now, 64 over in Mountain Home, 74 in Ontario right now. They're seeing hotter temperatures over in eastern Oregon and then up in the mountains, 51 degrees over in McCall and 37 degrees over in Stanley. Now today we can expect 97 degrees as the high here in Boise. We're going to have dry and hot conditions throughout and we'll see some gustier winds today. I'll let you know how that'll impact your weather throughout the broadcast and then we'll have those hot temperatures this afternoon. Now future cast showing us what we can expect for the next few days and today we will see little to no cloud cover throughout the southern part of the gem state and we can see that extend through Saturday as well and those high temperatures will show we'll see the high 90s throughout the Treasure Valley 97 98 degrees 100 degrees over in Ontario and then up in the mountains 85 degrees expected in McCall today and 83 over in Stanley, 91 degrees over in Idaho City. So hot temperatures throughout the southern part of the Gem State. Thank you, Vasily. Yeah, when we say cool down, we don't mean by much, folks. 502 on your Friday, CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI. We bring you team traffic all morning long. It is Friday, so everything is looking pretty quiet out there this morning, but running smoothly. No reports of anything to note. So when you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. And you're looking live in Washington, D.C. this morning, where the House Committee investigating the January 6th riot, they returned to primetime with a hearing centered around what then-President Trump did and did not do the day of the assault. Now, CBS's Serena Marshall reports from Capitol Hill. The, the Congressional Committee investigating the January 6th attacks says President Trump ignored pleas to stop the violence. President Trump did not fail to act. He chose not to act. In the primetime event, the eighth committee hearing, focusing on how Mr. Trump reacted to what was unfolding on Capitol Hill. He sent tweets that inflamed and expressed support for the desire of some to literally kill Vice President Mike Pence. The star witnesses, two former White House aides who resigned that day, who, among other things, recalled seeing Mr. Trump's tweet that Vice President Mike Pence did not have the courage to overturn the election results. Looked like fuel being poured on the fire. It was essentially him giving the green light to these uh, people. The White House security official told the committee that agents assigned to Vice President Pence were starting to fear for their lives. There were calls to um, say goodbye to family members, so on and so forth. It was getting... For whatever the reason was on the ground, the DP detail thought that this was about to get very ugly. The committee also played outtakes from a previously unseen video the former president taped the following day. Congress has certified the results. I don't want to say the election's over. I just want to say Congress has certified the results without saying the election's over, okay? Following the hearing, committee member Jamie Raskin said the Justice Department, not Congress, will ultimately decide if criminal charges should be filed against Mr. Trump. Serena Marshall, CBS News, Capitol Hill. Vice Chair Liz Cheney said the January 6th Select Committee will be holding more hearings come fall. No dates have been officially set yet. Well, President Biden testing positive for coronavirus following a routine screening Thursday morning. The White House doctor says he has mild symptoms that include fatigue, a runny nose, and an occasional dry cough. He was prescribed a five-day course of Paxlovid. That's an antiviral drug that dramatically reduces the severe risk of COVID. 
And stay tuned later. We'll take a look at what president's, the president's infection may mean for the White House and the factors that may put him at a greater risk. Well, here in Idaho this morning, Governor Brad Little doing more to fight fentanyl in Idaho. Up to $1 million will now be used to buy more roadside testing equipment and to start a new education campaign. This is not a, a one solution problem. Uh, we've got to do everything from uh, significantly increasing awareness of the public, uh, particularly young people. Uh, we've got to fight back uh, against uh, the supply coming in. The governor says most of that supply comes from drug cartels. He launched Operation Esto Perpetua earlier this year to help fight the threat of fentanyl and meth in our state. Now, the effort includes law enforcement, families and a citizen action group. Well, turning now to fire season this morning, the Moose Fire still growing in the Salmon Chalice National Forest. It's about 17 miles northwest of Salmon and more than 20,000 acres now. Now, NIFSI doesn't expect containment on this fire until the end of August. More than 500 wildland fire personnel are currently working on it. And some developing news overnight near the Moose Fire. A helicopter, it went down in the Salmon Chalice National Forest. Now, Rotac Helicopter Services said two pilots were on board that aircraft. As of this morning, it's unclear if the aircraft was part of a crew working on that fire. There's also no word on the pilot's condition. Now, CBS2 is learning more about what exactly happened, and we will keep you updated. Well, switching gears, the 16 year old Treasure Valley boy still missing after drowning Monday night in Lucky Peak. So sad. Deputies say he fell off a jet ski without a life jacket on. Now, law enforcement is now turning to an underwater search and recovery expert to help. He's found more than 130 bodies in his time. Still, he says the search could take days. We can't find everyone because of certain conditions. Sometimes they're not even in the water. We've been really, really hoping that they radio us and tell us they found him. The underwater search and recovery expert says they're getting better information from law enforcement on where the body might be. They say they believe the boy is fairly close to the shore. So if you do go up there and see crews searching, go to the opposite bank to give them space. Well, a devastating fire at the Idaho Youth Ranch warehouse, leaving behind burnt donations and big challenges ahead. Now, this distribution center is a lifeline for many of the programs the Youth Ranch offers, but that's now all put to a halt. What's happening here is really um, feeding our lifeline of services um, through processing and preparing donated goods to go to our thrift stores. People go to the thrift stores and they know that there's good deals there. They don't necessarily understand that when they purchase that shirt for $2, um, that, that that money is supporting all of these kids and their therapy and they're making a difference in changing lives. The Idaho Youth Ranch needs your help now. CBS2 and News Talk KBOI, we're trying to spread the word. You can donate money through youthranch.org. You can find a link for that for idahonews.com. And a reminder that they can't take any physical donations right now, but CBS2 will let you know when that does change. And before we get to weather, the CBS2 team is looking forward to the Spirit of Boise Balloon Classic, and we hope you are too. It's about a month away, and if you're new to the Treasure Valley, it's an annual hot air balloon festival. They fill the sky over Labor Day weekend. Now that Friday, there's a night glow spectacular at Ann Morrison Park, one of my favorites. The balloons, they light up and give a show synchronized with music. Uh, we wait until darkness comes and then light up the hot air balloon envelopes. And as they are filled with hot air and burners burn, that actually creates a big globe that glows. And to be able to see that choreographed with music, it's something that you should not miss. The event kicks off Wednesday, August 31st with Kids Day and your kids, they can take a tethered balloon flight all by themselves. That means they go about 20 to 30 feet in the air, but again, connected to the ground by a rope. Safety first. We've got all you need to know. Just head on over to IdahoNews.com. Oh, that looks awesome. I'm excited to see it for my first time here in Boise. It's it looks like a beautiful site, honestly. Oh, yeah, and we had talked about Night Glow, the Friday night event, by the way. That actually is one of my favorites. So in the evening, we, we light up all of those.
those balloons. Such a fun time. But of course, the morning launches also are beautiful, of course, because of our sunrise. Not only the balloons there, too. And this morning, we're expecting another beautiful sunrise as well for your Friday morning. Yeah, we're expecting a beautiful sunrise and a beautiful day in mm -hmm. general. We're going to see some high temperatures. And we're seeing high temperatures across the western United States as well. California's still dealing with that heat wave, especially northern California, 104 in Redding and 100 degrees over in Sacramento. Medford, just west of us, is going to be 91 degrees today. They're dropping off from that heat wave they've been experiencing over there and then as you can see up in Idaho 97 degrees expected as the high today future cast showing us why we're seeing those upper 90 degree temperatures and that's because of the low pressure up north and to the south of us which is pushing that high pressure into the Treasure Valley area bringing out those hot temperatures and bringing those clear skies as well now over the next few days it's not going to be as hot this weekend we're going to start warming up Monday we'll see there's near 100 degree temperatures later next week and we'll see gusty winds throughout the weekend as well, which is going to change some weather for certain parts of the Treasure Valley. Now up to Idaho City through Mountain Home and over in Twin Falls as well, we have a red flag warning, which is creating those uh, making, uh, there's high fire weather throughout those areas. So be careful, make sure you're not uh, spreading or making there any kind of dangerous uh, fire warnings or anything like that. But we're going to see high temperatures throughout the Treasure Valley area, 97, 98 degrees in the Boise Emmett area, 100 degrees over in Ontario, and then up in the mountains, 85 degrees in McCall expected today. All right, Vasily, you said cooler, but not by much today, guys. Get ready. 511 on your Friday, CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI. We bring you team traffic all morning long. Looking good out there. No reports of much happening. So we'll get on with the show when you do eventually get in the car. Make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. And straight ahead this morning on CBS 2 News, high taps plaguing the U.S. this weekend. How people are trying to stay cool as the heat sticks around. Plus the change in temperatures, putting butterflies at risk. The species that's now facing extin extinction because of this warmer weather. Well, it's time for our question of the day. First, let's take a look at Thursday's question. Scientists who study the behavior of crows say this is their favorite snack. Basili hit the nail on the head. The answer, Cheetos, a refined pallet of cheese for those crows. All right, now for today's question of the day, 40% of people say they prefer to put this topping on their ice cream. All right, almost 50% folks, what do you think it is? Here's a look at your CBS2 adventure weather local forecast over in Marsing. 94 degrees expected as the high today. That'll drop to 62 tonight and it'll jump right back to 94 degrees tomorrow over in Mar Marsing. Now in the in Cascade, 86 degrees expected as the high today. That'll drop to 44 degrees tonight and then it'll jump 2 degrees to 88 degrees expected as the high tomorrow. Thank you, Vasily. 515 on your Friday. Now, don't expect the heat to escape anytime soon. Record setting temperatures forecast to continue across the U.S. through the weekend and maybe even longer. Now, Amy Kylie takes a look at how people are coping. Forecasters say more than four out of five Americans could see temperatures above 90 in the next seven days. These areas are under extreme heat warnings. These have heat advisories. Phoenix could hit 113 degrees today. What I'm hearing is letter carriers are leaving because in the heat all day and night. Maricopa County has reported more than two dozen heat-related deaths since May. The heat also has turned deadly in Dallas. It's seen more than twice the triple-degree days than is normal for July. Elsewhere in Texas, a lack of water is forcing ranchers to send cattle to slaughter early. Near Memphis, some marching bands have been practicing outside. I think they should do it early morning and late evening. I don't think they should do it in the heat of the day. And it's not just the South that's sweltering. New York could see its longest streak of 90-plus days in nearly a decade. Avoid going out in the peak hours. Stay out of it. Stay hydrated. Keep your pets inside. Check on your neighbors. Philadelphia could top 100 on Sunday. 
And this animal sanctuary north of Pittsburgh is using fans to keep animals healthy. But some Americans struggle to afford the electricity they need to stay cool. It's both a health and economic crisis. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. Volunteers are looking to help out those in the brutal heat. In Phoenix, Arizona, people handing out wet neck wipes, reusable water bottles, sunscreens, misters, all to keep people cool. They're also hoping to educate people about their nearby cooling centers. We've had tough experiences where we see folks who might have been living in their car for a couple days just 100 yards away from the door to a public cooling center, but they didn't know that that was an option for them. And so those are some of the barriers that we're hoping to break down with our We're Cool outreach teams. Oh, just look at that heat. The effort is all part of the city's heat response and mitigation team. The team will take to the streets throughout the entire summer. And a reminder, Boise also has cooling centers open this summer. You can find a place to cool off at the Boise City Hall, Cathedral of the Rockies, Corpus Christi, Our Path Home, the Boise Public Library, and the YMCA. You can find out more information on what days and hours those cooling centers are open. You can visit pathhome.org. We have a link to their website on idahonews.com. Well, the heat is impacting more than just humans. The monarch butterfly is now risking extinction. It's now listed as endangered. They say higher temperatures cause earlier migrations and with droughts, less milkweed grows. And that's what monarchs eat exclusively. Now, according to International Union for the Conservation of Nature, the butterfly's western population, it's actually gone down 99.9% between 1980 and 2021, down to around 2,000 left in the area. Wow. That's actually pretty surprising. I saw one the other day and got very excited. Mm -hmm. I love monarch butterflies. Yeah, beautiful creatures. All right, well, let's try to bring some uplift today because it is Friday. We made it to the end of the week and the weekend is looking beautiful. Mm -hmm. Lots of sunshine and lots of heat, so lots of opportunities to get outside and enjoy it. Yeah, lots of heat and it's not that really bearing down heat with that 100 degree temperatures we've been seeing over the past couple days. Today is gonna be much nicer. We're gonna be floating around the 97 degree mark, so it's still gonna be hot, but not as hot as it's been the past few days. Now temperatures right now are cooler. 69 degrees right now in Boise over in Caldwell. They're at 61 degrees and then up in Ontario 74 degrees right now. Up in the mountains 51 degrees in McCall and 37 degrees over in Stanley. Now when you head out the door this morning it's going to start getting hotter throughout the day. We'll see it start to heat up around 11 a.m. It'll be 82 degrees and that'll start jumping up to by 3 p.m. It'll be 93 degrees leading up to our high today of 97 degrees. 97 here in Boise, 98 degrees expected over in Emmett, 100 degrees over in Ontario, and then up in the mountains, 85 degrees is expected in McCall, 83 in Stanley, and 91 degrees over in Idaho City. Now, your extended forecast for the Treasure Valley, we'll see 97 degrees today. It'll be 96, 97 throughout the weekend, and it'll start heating up starting early next week. 98 degrees expected on Monday. That'll jump up to triple digits on Tuesday, and we'll be floating around that triple digits digit mark throughout the week next week. Now over in the mountains, 83 degrees expected today. That'll be the coolest throughout the week and it'll start increasing through the weekend leading up to Monday and Tuesday will be 88, 89 degrees, 90 and 91 degrees expected later in the week. Now make sure you tune in for Chief Meteorologist Roland Stedham's forecast today at 4, 5, 30, 9 and 10 o'clock tonight for your weather. Thank you, Vasily. It is 520 on your Friday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. Live look out there this morning. Looking good. Everything moving on along. What we like to see on your Friday when you do get in the car. Make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. Today's number of the day deals with government regulations. Now 50% of voters say it's not fair to penalize a company or individual for violating regulations that are forgotten or may not have been used in many years. The Scott Rasmussen National Survey also found about 23% think it is fair, 27% are unsure. The survey also found about 59% of voters are in favor of a proposal to eliminate regulations that have not been enforced for 10 years. Well, still to come on CBS 2 News this morning, President Biden battling coronavirus, the factors in his favor, and what may be putting him at risk. 
and later Comic-Con back in full force after the pandemic puts things on hold. How businesses are now benefiting from the convention's return. Be the first to know about breaking Idaho news and get help planning your day with the latest detailed weather forecast. Download the CBS2 mobile app today. Sponsored by Westmark Credit Union. This is CBS2 News this morning. 524 on your Friday. Welcome back. President Biden testing positive for coronavirus. His medical team is said to be doing careful contact tracing now with anyone who's been working closely with him in recent days and also carefully tracking his vital signs for serious symptoms. Medical reporter Liz Bonus has the latest. Hey there, hello to you. There are a number of steps President Biden has taken that are protective against COVID-19. And there are a few things that do raise his risk for complications from the virus. My husband tested positive for COVID. I talked to him just a few minutes ago. He's doing fine. He's feeling good. The president's wife, Jill Biden, still testing negative for COVID-19 today, saying... I am going to keep my schedule. I am, according to CDC guidelines, I am keeping masks. Those same CDC guidelines also recommend four shots of the COVID-19 vaccine for those who are President Biden's age. He is 79. He's had those shots. And so he should be as protected as you can be from a vaccine standpoint. He's also likely getting Paxlovid protection as well. President Biden is now taking the antiviral medication. His office reports he has mild symptoms. So it should shorten the duration of his symptoms, so he maybe won't have a fever as, as long, maybe his cough will get better sooner. Infectious disease specialist Dr. Stephen Blatt of Ohio's TriHealth told me, however, what President Biden and those in recent days who were in close contact with him don't have going for them is this current virus variant. This BA5 is incredibly infectious. It also is able to better evade the antibodies which protect from the current vaccines. Because of that, it can take just about anyone down, vaccinated or not. All this, of course, why his medical team will continue to monitor his symptoms closely. I'm medical reporter Liz Bonus. Now back to you. Researchers at the University of California, San Diego, are working on a new COVID vaccine, one that may be effective against all variants of the virus. Now they're using modified bacterial DNA in hopes of creating a more durable vaccine that could be taken as a pill by inhalation or other delivery methods. Well, Amazon making big moves into the healthcare space. The tech giant acquiring the primary care organization One Medical for nearly $4 billion. Now, Amazon releasing in a statement that says it believes the partnership will, quote, help more people get better care when and how they need it. Still to come on CBS 2 News this morning, getting ready for the spirit of Boise. What you can look forward to next month as balloons prepare to fill the sky. And a look at what's coming up tonight on CBS 2. After, again, all your favorites, you can join us for CBS 2 News at 10 o'clock with Brent Hunsaker, Roland Stedham, and Janae Ryan. And don't forget about our question of the day. 40% of people say they prefer to put this on top of their ice cream. What do you think it is, folks? We'll read some of your guesses coming up next. This morning on CBS 2 News, the final scheduled hearing on the January 6th Capitol attack wraps up. Why lawmakers say former President Trump didn't do enough to stop the assault. Plus, the search for the teen who fell into Lucky Peak Reservoir, it continues today. Why the recovery efforts may take days, even as law enforcement brings in more help. Plus, hoping to lend a hand to the Idaho Youth Ranch, how the fire at their Boise warehouse is taking a major toll. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Beautiful views here on this Friday morning. 69 degrees right now here in Boise. A little bit of southeasterly wind, six miles per hour right now, but still feels like 69 degrees on this cool Friday morning. Now, today will not be cool. 97 degrees expected as the high, and we'll have dry and hot conditions throughout the day with a 
a little bit of gusty winds and we'll see those hot temperatures roll in this afternoon. Now, future cash showing us what we can expect for cloud cover over the next few days. And as you can see, Treasure Valley looking very clear over the next few days going into Saturday as well. We'll see some clouds on the southeastern part of the state, but in the Treasure Valley, we are going to have little to no clouds in these high temperatures you see on your screen. 97 to 98 throughout most of the Treasure Valley, 100 over in eastern Oregon in Ontario, 85 degrees up in McCall, 83 in Stanley, and 91 degrees in Idaho City. Now, if you're going on a run this morning, Adventure Cash showing you we're going to heat up quickly at 97 degrees by 6 p.m. Thank you, Vasily. It is 531 on your Friday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring a team traffic all morning long. A few more headlights out there this morning, but no reports of anything to slow you down on this Friday morning commute. When you do eventually get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. And you are looking live in Washington, D.C. this morning, where the House Committee investigating the January 6th riot, it returned to prime time with a hearing centered around what then President Trump did and did not do the day of the assault. CBS's Serena Marshall reports from Capitol Hill. One week after the, the Congressional Committee investigating the January 6th attacks says President Trump ignored pleas to stop the violence. President Trump did not fail to act. He chose not to act. In the primetime event, the eighth committee hearing focusing on how Mr. Trump reacted to what was unfolding on Capitol Hill. He sent tweets that inflamed and expressed support for the desire of some to literally kill Vice President Mike Pence. The star witnesses, two former White House aides who resigned that day, who, among other things, recalled seeing Mr. Trump's tweet that Vice President Mike Pence did not have the courage to overturn the election results. It looked like fuel being poured on the fire. It was essentially him giving the green light to these uh, people. The White House security official told the committee that agents assigned to Vice President Pence were starting to fear for their lives. There were calls to um, say goodbye to family members, so on and so forth. It was getting... For whatever the reason was on the ground, the VP detail thought that this was about to get very ugly. The committee also played outtakes from a previously unseen video the former president taped the following day. Congress has certified the results. I don't want to say the election's over. I just want to say Congress has certified the results without saying the election's over, okay? Following the hearing, committee member Jamie Raskin said the Justice Department, not Congress, will ultimately decide if criminal charges should be filed against Mr. Trump. Serena Marshall, CBS News, Capitol Hill. Well, Vice Chair Liz Cheney said the January 6th Select Committee will hold hearings additionally this fall, though no dates have been officially set. President Biden tested positive for coronavirus during a routine screening yesterday morning. The White House doctor says he has mild symptoms, including fatigue, a runny nose, and an occasional dry cough. He was prescribed a five-day course of Paxilovid. Now, that's an antiviral drug that dramatically reduces the risk of severe COVID. Well, here in Idaho, Governor Brad Little doing more to fight fentanyl here in Idaho. Up to $1 million will now be used to buy more roadside testing equipment and to start a new educational campaign. This is not a, a one solution problem. Uh, we've got to do everything from uh, significantly increasing awareness of the public, uh, particularly young people. Uh, we've got to fight back uh, against uh, the supply coming in. The governor says most of that supply comes from drug cartels. He launched Operation Esto Perpetua earlier this year to fight the threat of fentanyl and meth in our state. Now that effort includes law enforcement, families, and now a citizen action group. Well, turning to fire season this morning, the Moose Fire still growing up in the Salmon Chalice National Forest. It's about 17 miles northwest of the town of Salmon. It's sitting at more than 20,000 acres this morning. NIFSI says it doesn't expect containment on the fire until the end of August. More than 500 wildland firefighter personnel 
are currently working on it. Well, some development news, some developing news overnight near the Moose Fire. A helicopter, it went down in the Salmon Chalice National Forest. Now, Rotac Helicopter Services say two pilots were on board that aircraft. As of this morning, it is unclear if the aircraft was part of a crew working on the fire. There's also no word on the pilot's condition. CBS2 is working to learn more about exactly what happened. We will keep you updated. <clears throat> Pardon me. Well, a 16 year old boy still missing after drowning Monday night at Lucky Peak. It's so sad. Deputies <clears throat> say he fell off a jet ski without a life jacket on. Law enforcement now turning to an underwater search and recovery expert to help find him. Now this expert, he's found more than 130 bodies. Still, he says the search could take days. We can't find everyone because of certain conditions. Sometimes they're not even in the water. We've been really, really hoping that they radio us and tell us they found him. The underwater search and recovery expert says they're getting better information from law enforcement on where the boy might be. Now they believe he may be fairly close to the shore. So if you do go up there and see crews searching, they ask you to go to the opposite bank to give them space. Well, a devastating fire at the Idaho Youth Ranch warehouse, leaving behind burnt donations and big challenges ahead. Now, this distribution center, it's a lifeline for many of the programs that the Youth Ranch offers, but now that's all put to a halt. What's happening here is really um, feeding our lifeline of services um, through processing and preparing donated goods to go to our thrift stores. People go to the thrift stores and they know that there's good deals there. They don't necessarily understand that when they purchase that shirt for $2, um, that, that that money is supporting all of these kids and their therapy and they're making a difference in changing lives. And that's why the Idaho Youth Ranch needs your help now. CBS2 and Newstalk KBOI we're spreading the word. You can donate money through youthranch.org. You can find that link on idahonews.com. They can't take physical donations right now, but CBS2 will let you know when that does change. And before we get to weather, the CBS2 team looking forward to the Spirit of Boise Balloon Classic, and we hope you are too. It's about a month away, and if you're new to the Treasure Valley, it's our annual hot air balloon festival. They fill the sky over Labor Day weekend, and that Friday, there's a night glow spectacular in Ann Morrison Park. That's when the balloons line up and give a show synchronized with music. Uh, we wait until darkness comes and then light up the hot air balloon envelopes. And as they are filled with hot air and burners burn, that actually creates a big globe that glows. And to be able to see that choreographed with music, it's something that you should not miss. It is spectacular. The event that kicks off Wednesday, August 31st with Kids Day. That's where your kids can take a tethered ride in a balloon. That means they'll go up about 20 to 30 feet, but still connected to the ground with a rope. We've got all you need to know. Just head on over to IdahoNews.com. I oh, love those aerial views of the balloon festival getting excited. And I know that temperatures, at least for this weekend, cooling down a little bit. It's looking good. Lots of sunshine. Any changes to what we're expecting? I know there's red flag warning to the east of us, but are we expecting any gusty conditions? We'll see some gusty winds here. Most of those gusty winds are over in the Mountain Home, Idaho City, and Twin Falls area. That's where we're seeing the red flag warning right now, which just means there's critical fire weather conditions. So make sure you stay safe out there and keep the, uh, the wildfire, wildfire danger to a minimum over in those areas. Now the forecast highs across the western United States over in California they're experiencing heat wave over there 104 in Redding and 100 in Sacramento 101 down in Salt Lake as well high temperatures throughout the western United States and as you can see up in Boise 97 degrees expected today. Now future cast showing us what we can expect over the next few days and we're going to be experiencing high temperatures throughout low pressure up north and to the south of us are bringing in that high pressure which is bringing out those clear skies and those hot weather conditions. Now, over the next few days, we are it's not going to be as hot this weekend, but we'll start warming up Monday and we may near or reach those 100 degree temperatures again later next week. Now, we'll see gusty winds through the weekend as well, which will go along with these high temperatures. 97 here in Boise, 98 over in Emmett, 97 over in Mountain Home as well, and 100 degrees over in Ontario. Now, that red flag warning goes in this area 
area and comes all the way down to Twin Falls. So make sure you're being safe out there and limit your uh, danger capacity throughout that throughout the next couple days. Now up in McCall, 85 degrees and 83 degrees over in Stanley expected today. Now over the next five days here in the Treasure Valley, we'll drop to our low of 96 for the next five days on Saturday and jump all the way up to 100 degrees on Tuesday. All right, thank you, Vasily. It is 540 on your Friday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring it team traffic all morning long. Looking good out there on this Friday. Again, a few more headlights making their way into the office, but nothing to slow you down this morning. So when you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. Now it's time for our question of the day. The question is, 40% of people say they prefer to put this topping on their ice cream, about 50%. What are we thinking, Vasily? My first thought was sprinkles, but I feel like 40% <laughs> is too low for that. So I was thinking maybe fruit, like putting any kind of fruit up there. Oh, that so. does. Fruit sounds so good this morning. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I need, I need to know, um, do you know the difference between sprinkles and jimmies? No, I do not. Okay, I'm just curious. If, you, if any folks out there know, feel free to message me about it. But do, I was wondering which one you prefer because they are two different specific sprinkles. Hmm. Not that we're going to get that specific I think today. I call them all sprinkles, but <laughs> I need to start looking up my sprinkle uh, definitions here. Oh, gosh. Okay, Jen says butterscotch. Ooh, yes. Good one. Love, love the butterscotch. Good one. Very sweet. All right, let's see. Joe, chocolate syrup. Another great one. Yeah, I was going to say, there's, I mean, there's so many. I was also thinking along the lines of fruit, maybe like that maraschino cherry mm -hmm. situation. Love those little guys. All right, what else do we have this morning? Doug says Oreos. Oh, yum. I like that one. All right. Well, I know that it's going to be a hot day today. I know many people thinking about getting some ice cream. Maybe this will start your morning off with some good ideas. If you think you know the answer, we still have another hour and 15 minutes for you to guess. So again, you can guess on our Facebook page or our Twitter page. We'll read some of the answers coming up and reveal the answer right before CBS this morning. Well, still to come on CBS 2 News this morning, we may be seeing more supply chain trouble soon. Ugh, why truckers are blocking a major U.S. port. Coming at you with CBS 2's adventure weather local forecast over in Marsing. 94 degrees expected as the high today. That'll drop to 62 degrees tonight. And then it'll jump back up to that 94 degree mark tomorrow as well over in Marsing. Now up in the mountains in Cascade, 86 degrees expected as the high today. Sunny temperatures throughout tonight. It'll drop to 44 degrees and it'll jump back up two degrees higher. 88 degrees expected as the high in Cascade tomorrow. Thank you, Vasily. Turning now to the latest on the war in Ukraine. This morning, a deal to restart Ukraine's grain exports is set to be signed. Turkey's president says Russia and Ukraine will sign the deal to reopen Ukraine's Black Sea ports in Istanbul. Now, the deal will reportedly enable Ukraine to export millions of tons of grain and other agricultural products. Now, Ukraine's exports have been stuck in Black Sea ports because of the ongoing war, which is threatening the global supply of grain. Well, here in the U.S., protesting truck drivers continuing to disrupt operations at a port in Oakland with that's the world's ninth busiest port, by the way. Now, they're opposed to a California law about to take effect that will force them to give up their status as independent contractors. Now, local union leaders say the new law could give truckers more rights. However, protesters say it'll force them out of their, quote, independent lifestyle. If implemented, your jobs will be gone. As independent workers, you will not have a job unless you work under some company. Officials say if this goes on much longer, there could be a fresh set of supply chain nightmares to deal with. So you can imagine that if there's a, a stoppage, it's kind of like a crimp in the hose and the water's going to back up in a hurry. So it's not going to take a long time of this kind of disruption before it's going to bring at least the Port of Oakland. The Port of Oakland handles about 98,000 shipping containers in a single month. Right now, those containers are being pushed to other California ports. However, the concern is that other independent truckers may join this movement and shut down those ports as well. 
Well, gas prices still causing a strain on drivers despite their downward tread nationwide. Well, here in Idaho, you can still expect to pay around 506 a gallon. That's about 65 cents higher than the national average. According to Gas Buddy, the cheapest place to fill up still Costco. The price there still hanging around 495 a gallon as of this morning. Well, it is day two of Comic-Con down in San Diego, California, and the massive convention bringing in people from across the U.S. Now, Rocio De La Fe lets us in on some of the fun and explains how businesses are benefiting from the convention's impact. It's the return of Comic-Con to San Diego. The atmosphere is electric. You know, and uh, we're ready. We're, we're back in the mix, so we're happy. Joe Tirado and his family of villains made it into town for the event all the way from New Jersey. It's amazing. It, it shows that we're going back to normalcy, that everyone's back out here. We're celebrating. The costumes are out. The cosplayers are out, and it's just, just a great atmosphere. And just like him, hundreds of thousands of people are descending into downtown San Diego for the four-day event. There's a lot going on. There's a lot to be excited about. I'm super stoked to be back. It's been it's been incredible as usual. Businesses throughout the Gaslam Quarter are set to benefit tremendously from the large crowds. Allison McKay at Cafe Sevilla says staff have been preparing for this moment for months. We weren't expecting this many people and we're actually really excited and really happy for it because it brings a lot of business to us, especially after the pandemic, and it just makes it even better to be around, you know, be in downtown. Gaslam Quarter social media manager Alma Asensio says Comic-Con is one of the biggest events of the year for businesses. For our second New Year's Eve, basically for us, Comic-Con brings a lot of business. Our merchants are happy. Uh, we have a lot of offers going on. We just uh, are excited and our businesses are just happy to have this impact from like globally, nationally and from Teach Tijuana coming over and just, you know, having fun here in Gasm Quarter and having fun at Comic Con. No, I don't like that one, Miss Silly. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. All right. Oh, okay. Well. I don't like those scary ones. We were talking about it earlier. The scary ones, not Sarah's thing. Okay, well, let's talk about the weather because one of my things is getting outside and this weekend planning to do that. So what's it looking like? Yeah, it'll be a fun weekend for sure. Temperatures right now are on the cooler side. 69 degrees as the high today. Or sorry, as the high, my bad. It's right now temperatures are at 69 degrees. We're going to get a lot hotter today. 61 degrees over in Caldwell, 74 degrees in Ontario, up in the mountains, 51 degrees right now in McCall, and 37 degrees right now over in Stanley. Now, when you head out the door this morning, you'll notice it'll start heating up very quickly today. By 11 o'clock, it'll be 82 degrees. By 1 o'clock, it'll be 89 degrees, and that'll jump up to uh, uh, that'll jump up to our high today of 97 degrees. Now across the Treasure Valley we'll be seeing upper 90 temperatures throughout 98 over in Emmett, 100 degrees over in Ontario. They're the lone triple digit temperature and then up in the mountains 85 degrees over in McCall and 83 degrees over in Stanley. Now for your extended forecast we're going to see high temperatures throughout the week. Uh, 96 will be the lowest over on Saturday but we'll gradually start increasing. On Tuesday we'll reach that triple digit mark and we'll stay around that triple digit mark through Thursday. Now over in the mountains, we're seeing a similar trend as well. 83 will be the lowest today and will gradually start increasing throughout the week. Sunday, it'll be 86 degrees. Monday, it'll be 88 degrees. Tuesday, it'll be 89 degrees. Wednesday, it'll be 90 and Thursday, it'll be 91. So we'll see sunny temperatures throughout sunny um, conditions throughout and we'll see those high temperatures throughout as well. Thank you, Vasily. It is 551 on your Friday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. Yeah, not much to report out there this morning. Your Friday commute looking like it will be a smooth one. So when you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all your team traffic updates. Coming up on CBS 2 News, a teen's quick thinking may have saved a man's life. Why this ranch hand is now being hailed as a hero. This is CBS 2 News this morning. 555 on your Friday. Welcome back. A teen in Tomball, Texas is being hailed as a hero after saving a man's life. Now, Zach Tawatari shares how he jumped into action during a messy situation. 
sitting on some 60 acres in Tombaugh. Oh, you see that calf along that fence? Up Ranch there? manager Bill Rowan fans has been baling hay or steering cattle. Run them in here and bring them through the chute. Here at Cedarbrook Farms for nearly 40 years. Since about 84. But just last weekend, he says he was performing minor surgery on a calf like he'd done numerous times. And I've never had a problem before. Using a razor sharp scalpel except this time. And while I was working from the back here, the calf moved its leg and hit my arm, and my arm come over and slit right across here. A gash. About that long, just like I was trying to cut my thumb off. He thought some paper towels might help. And I realized my towels were already soaked through, and as I went to get another set of towels, took my hand off, and then it sprayed like that. But luckily for Bill, he had a hand, specifically his new ranch hand. High school junior Shane Stevens, who realized if you're squirting blood six inches, you have cut a major artery. So Shane, who trains with special forces, grabbed a first aid kit from his truck and quickly applied a tourniquet. Don't panic. Panic creates chaos. After Shane drove him to a nearby Memorial Hermann satellite, Bill was transported by ambulance to the hospital's Woodlands location, where he says a hand surgeon stitched his artery back together. Did it hurt? Not at all. But without Shane's quick thinking, Bill says it could have been a much different story. You know, it only takes three to five minutes and you're bleeding out. It was Shane's first time using the tourniquet. Grab this, snug it up. And for Bill, luckily, not his last steer. That was a goner. A heroic act, he says, that shows the future, too, is in good hands. This kid here saved my life. Wow. Thankful for him. All right, switching gears. CBS2 and CapEd Credit Union, we're teaming up with the Salvation Army to help provide school supplies to children right here in the Treasure and Magic Valleys. Students, of course, they need things like backpacks, binders, folders, crayons, glue, pens, pencils, colored pencils, a long list. Now, donations, they can be made at any CapEd Credit Union location in the Treasure Valley or in Twin Falls. We have a link to donate on our website. Just head to Idaho News. Dot com helping some kiddos out still to come on CBS 2 News this morning, getting ready for the spirit of Boise, what you can look forward to as of next month and an update on President Biden and his coronavirus. We'll give you more coming up. We'll have also your top headlines at the top of the hour. We'll be right back. Take the news with you on the radio 670 KBOI. And for news and information 24 hours a day, click on IdahoNews.com. This morning on CBS 2 News, the final scheduled hearing on the January 6th Capitol attack wraps up. Why lawmakers say former President Trump didn't do enough to stop the assault. Plus, the search for a teen who fell into Lucky Peak Reservoir continues today. Why the recovery effort may take days, even as law enforcement brings in more help. Plus, hoping to lend a hand to the Idaho Youth Ranch, how the fire at their Boise warehouse is now taking a major toll. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. A live look on downtown Boise on this Friday, July 22nd, 2022. I'm Sarah Jacobson. A little peek of first light this morning. It is beautiful out there to kick off your Friday morning. The good news, triple digit temperatures staying at bay at least for the weekend, but they are going to be heading back for next week. Good morning, Vasily. Good morning, Sarah. Yeah, temperatures right now are on the cooler side. 65 degrees here in Boise, down in Mountain Home. 62 degrees there right now, 68 over in Twin Falls. In Ontario, feeling the heat this morning, 74 degrees in Eastern Oregon. Now up in the mountains, 52 degrees right now in McCall and 35 degrees in Stanley. Now, those cold temperatures aren't gonna be sticking around. 97 degrees expected as the high today. We're gonna have dry and hot conditions throughout today and some gusty winds making an appearance and we'll see those hot temperatures 
shares roll in this afternoon. Now, future cash showing us what we can expect over the next few days in terms of cloud cover. And as you can see, little to no cloud cover throughout the Treasure Valley. We may see some clouds in the southeastern part of the state, but as for the Treasure Valley, we are going to have high temperatures and clear skies. Now, these high temperatures, they're going to float around the high, seven, or high 90s, 97 to 98 throughout the valley, 100 degrees over in Ontario expected today, and then up in the mountains, 85 degrees in McCall and 91 degrees in Idaho City. Thank you, Vasily. It is 601 on your Friday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. Looking good out there this morning, adding a few more headlights to the mix, but it is smooth sailing for your Friday commute. Not much to report. So when you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all your team traffic updates and you are looking live in Washington DC this morning where the House committee investigating the January 6 riot. It returned to prime time with a hearing centered around what then President Trump did and did not do the day of the assault. Now CBS's Serena Marshall reports from Capitol Hill. One week after the, the attack, Congressional Committee investigating the January 6 attacks says President Trump Secretary ignored pleas to President stop Trump the violence. Have... President Trump did not fail to act. He chose not to act. In the primetime event, the eighth committee hearing, focusing on how Mr. Trump reacted to what was unfolding on Capitol Hill. He sent tweets that inflamed and expressed support for the desire of some to literally kill Vice President Mike Pence. The star witnesses, two former White House aides who resigned that day, who, among other things, recalled seeing Mr. Trump's tweet that Vice President Mike Pence did not have the courage to overturn the election results. Looked like fuel being poured on the fire. It was essentially him giving the green light to these uh, people. The White House security official told the committee that agents assigned to Vice President Pence were starting to fear for their lives. There were calls to um, say goodbye to family members, so on and so forth. It was getting... For whatever the reason was on the ground, the VP detail thought that this was about to get very ugly. The committee also played outtakes from a previously unseen video the former president taped the following day. Congress has certified the results. I don't want to say the election's over. I just want to say Congress has certified the results without saying the election's over, okay? Following the hearing, committee member Jamie Raskin said the Justice Department, not Congress, will ultimately decide if criminal charges should be filed against Mr. Trump. Serena Marshall, CBS News, Capitol Hill. Vice Chair Liz Cheney did say that the January 6th Select Committee is going to hold more hearings coming this fall, though no official dates have been set just yet. Well, President Tr Pri President Biden, pardon me, tested positive for coronavirus during a routine screening Thursday morning. The White House doctor says he has mild symptoms that includes fatigue, a runny nose, and the occasional dry cough. He was prescribed a five-day course of Paxlovid. That's an antiviral drug that dramatically reduces the risk of severe COVID. And stay tuned later. We'll take a closer look at what the president's infection may mean for the White House and the factors that may put him at a greater risk. Well, here in Idaho this morning, Governor Brad Little doing more to fight fentanyl in our state. Up to a million dollars will now be used to buy more roadside testing equipment and to start a new educational campaign. This is not a, a one solution problem. Uh, we've got to do everything from uh, significantly increasing awareness of the public, uh, particularly young people. Uh, we've got to fight back uh, against uh, the supply coming in. The governor, he says that most of that supply comes from drug cartels. Now, he launched Operation Esto Perpetua earlier this year to fight the threat of meth and fentanyl in our state. Now, that effort includes law enforcement, families, and now a citizen action group. Turning to fire season this morning, the moose fire still growing in the Salmon Chalice National Forest this morning. That's about 17 miles northwest of the city of Salmon. Now more than 20,000 acres and growing. Now NIFSI doesn't expect containment on the fire, they say, until the end of August. 
More than about 500 wildland personnel are working on that fire. And some developing news overnight near the Moose Fire. A helicopter went down in the Salmon Chalice National Forest last night. Now, Rotac Helicopter Services say that two pilots were on board that aircraft. As of this morning, it is unclear if the aircraft was part of a crew working on the fire. There's also no word on the pilot's condition. CBS2 is learning more about what exactly happened, and we will keep you updated. Switching gears, a 16 year old boy still missing after drowning Monday night at Lucky Peak. So sad. Deputies say he fell off a jet ski without a life jacket on. Now, law enforcement is now turning to an underwater search and recovery expert to help in this search. He's found more than 130 bodies. Still, he says this search could take days. We can't find everyone because of certain conditions. Sometimes they're not even in the water. We've been really, really hoping that they radio us and tell us they found him. The underwater search and recovery expert you just heard from says they're getting better information from law enforcement on where the boy might be. They say he may be fairly close to the shore. So if you do go up there and see crews searching, they ask that you go to the opposite bank to give them space. Well, a devastating fire at the Idaho Youth Ranch warehouse, leaving behind burnt donations and big challenges ahead. Now, this distribution center, it's a lifeline for many of the programs the Youth Ranch offers. But right now, that's put on a halt. What's happening here is really um, feeding our lifeline of services um, through processing and preparing donated goods to go to our thrift stores. People go to the thrift stores and they know that there's good deals there. They don't necessarily understand that when they purchase that shirt for $2, um, that, that that money is supporting all of these kids and their therapy and they're making a difference in changing lives. So the Idaho Youth Ranch needs your help now. CBS2 and News Talk KBOI, we're spreading the word. You can donate money through youthranch.org. You can find a link to that on idahonews.com. And a reminder, they can't take physical donations right now, but CBS2 will let you know when that does change. Yeah, hope to get them a little bit of help out there. All right, well, a beautiful day. Kick off to our Friday. It is almost to the weekend. We've officially made it. The good news, triple digit temperature is going to be going away, at least for most areas over the weekend. But I was looking at the long range forecast facility, and not only is it going to heat up again to those triple digits, but a shot at 105 degrees for us next week. Mm -hmm. Please tell yeah. me that I'm not seeing that right. Well, we are looking at definitely 100 <laughs> degree temperatures later next week. We may jump into that range. We'll see. Right now, everyone's dealing with the heat wave across the United States, and we are not left out of it as well. 102 over in Salt Lake today they're seeing high temperatures and 99 degrees in Denver over in California they're experiencing the heat wave as well 104 in Redding and 100 in Sacramento and as you can see up in Idaho 97 degrees expected as the high today in Boise now we're seeing those high temperatures because of the high pressure in our area created from the low pressure up north and to the south of us now that high pressure is creating those high temperatures as well as those clear skies we have been seeing over the past few days and we will see over the next few days. Now we'll be seeing sun throughout, not as hot this weekend, but we'll start warming up again this Monday and we'll see those near to 100 degree temperatures next week. And we'll see gusty winds through the weekend as well, which created a red flag warning from Idaho City across southeastern Idaho. And those that just means there is very critically high danger of fire throughout the southeastern part of the state. Now we're seeing high temperatures throughout the Treasure Valley, 97 to 98 degrees expected there and 100 over in Ontario up in the mountains, 85 degrees expected in McCall and 91 degrees expected in Idaho City. Now over the next few days, we'll see the temperature drop to 96, but it'll gradually increase throughout the next couple days leading up to Tuesday being 100 degrees then. All right, I will take what I can get. Thank you, Vasily. It is 610 on your Friday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring a team traffic all morning long. Let's get a check of what's happening out there from the News Talk Traffic Center with Ron O'Brien. Good morning, Ron. Happy Friday. Good morning. Yes, Friday is here indeed. Fridays can be lighter than usual in the morning hours for the most part on a typical Friday. Lighter traffic volumes. We'll see what goes, but Starting off very calm all the way around. It's uh, very quiet, not only uh, freeway routes, but other areas. Starting Monday, big construction uh, south of the Nampa Airport in Nampa will shut down the intersection of uh, Kings Road and Victory, a roundabout going in there. Starting Monday, that'll be closed until about uh, December or at least through November. Long-term deal. 
from the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio. I'm Ron O'Brien. Thank you, Ron. When you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. Straight ahead on CBS 2 News this morning, high temps plaguing the U.S. this weekend. How people are trying to stay cool as the heat sticks around. Plus, the change in temperatures putting butterflies at risk. The species that's now facing extinction because of the warmer weather. And it's time for our question of the day. First, let's take a look at yesterday's question. It was a fun one, too. Scientists who study the behavior of crows say this is their favorite snack. That answer, Cheetos. Didn't know the crows like the cheese. All right. Now for today's question, 40% of people say they prefer to put this topping on their ice cream. All right, folks, what do you think it is? CBS 2's Adventure Weather Local Forecast showing you the temperatures over in Marsing today and tomorrow. Today it'll be 94 degrees. That'll drop to 62 degrees tonight. And it'll jump right back up to 94 degrees tomorrow as well. Now over in the mountains in Cascade, we are expecting the high to be 86 degrees today. That'll drop to 44 degrees tonight. And then it'll jump 2 degrees higher tomorrow. 88 expected to be the high in Cascade. Thank you, Vasily. 615 on your Friday. Yeah, don't expect to escape our heat anytime soon. Record setting temperatures forecast to continue across much of the U.S. throughout the weekend, and there is the potential for even longer. Now, Amy Kiley takes a look at how people are trying to cope. Forecasters say more than four out of five Americans could see temperatures above 90 in the next seven days. These areas are under extreme heat warnings. These have heat advisories. Phoenix could hit 113 degrees today. What I'm hearing is letter carriers are leaving because in the heat all day and night. Maricopa County has reported more than two dozen heat-related deaths since May. The heat also has turned deadly in Dallas. It's seen more than twice the triple-degree days than is normal for July. Elsewhere in Texas, a lack of water is forcing ranchers to send cattle to slaughter early. Near Memphis, some marching bands have been practicing outside. I think they should do it early morning and late evening. I don't think they should do it in the heat of the day. And it's not just the South that's sweltering. New York could see its longest streak of 90 plus days in nearly a decade. Avoid going out in the peak hours, stay out of it, stay hydrated, keep your pets inside, check on your neighbors. Philadelphia could top 100 on Sunday. And this animal sanctuary north of Pittsburgh is using fans to keep animals healthy. But some Americans struggle to afford the electricity they need to stay cool. It's both a health and economic crisis. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. Yeah, it's so hot out there. Volunteers looking to help those out in the brutal heat. In Phoenix, Arizona, people handing out wet neck wraps, reusable water bottles, sunscreen misters, all to keep people cool. They're also hoping to educate people about nearby cooling centers. We've had tough experiences where we see folks who might have been living in their car for a couple days just 100 yards away from the door to a public cooling center, but they didn't know that that was an option for them. And so those are some of the barriers that we're hoping to break down with our We're Cool outreach teams. Now, this effort is all part of the city's heat response and mitigation team. Now, this team will take to the streets throughout the entire summer. And a reminder that Boise also has cooling centers open this summer to help keep you cool. You can find a place to cool off at the Boise City Hall, Cathedral of the Rockies, Corpus Christi, our path home, the Boise Public Library and the YMCA. You can find out more information on what days and hours the cooling centers are open. You can visit ourpathhome.org. We have a link to their website. Just head on over to IdahoNews.com. Well, this heat impacting more than just humans, the monarch butterfly now at risk of extinction. It's now listed as endangered. They say higher temperatures are causing earlier migrations and with droughts, less milkweed grows. And that's what monarchs eat exclusively. Now, according to the International Union for the Conservation of Nature, the butterfly's western population, get this, it's gone down 99.9% .9 between the 1980s and 2021. Only about 2,000 are left in our area. Wow. Wow, yeah, so when you see one, you know it's one of 2,000. 
pretty crazy stuff to think about that the heat can affect them so much. And I know many animals out there still trying to get through these triple digit temperatures. We have squirrels in the area that I actually put out water for just oh, to make sure they stay cool. Sweet, so, yep. so just a reminder, guys, we want to take care of everybody that does include our animals around the area, even, you know, our, our nature animals like our squirrels, our geese. I know a lot of people don't like the geese, but we want to make sure everyone's staying cool in these hot temperatures. Oh, yeah, it's going to be another <laughs> hot one today. Temperatures right now are on the cooler side, but we'll see it jump up to that high 90s range today. Temperatures right now on the cooler side, like I said, 65 degrees here in Boise. Over in Caldwell, it's 58 degrees there, definitely cooler there. And then over in Ontario, 74 degrees right now. Up in the mountains, 52 degrees over in McCall, 55 in Sun Valley, and 35 degrees in Stanley. Now, when you're heading out the door this morning, it'll be cooler this morning, but it'll start heating up throughout the day. 82 degrees by 11 o'clock, 93 by 3 o'clock, leading up to our high today of 97 degrees by 5 o'clock. Now, high temperatures for today, we're going Going to be floating around the high 90s, 97, 98 degrees, 97 in Boise, 98 over in Emmett. We'll reach triple digits in eastern Oregon over in Ontario. 97 down in Mountain Home and then up in the mountains, 85 degrees in McCall, 83 in Stanley and 91 degrees expected today in Idaho City. Now for your extended forecast, 97 to 96 expected throughout the weekend and then we'll gradually start heating up starting on Monday. We'll hit 98 degrees on Monday, triple digits on Tuesday and Thursday as well. Very high temperatures expected next week and then in the mountains. Today will be the coolest day of the week and then we'll gradually start heating up through the week. 85, 86 expected this weekend. Monday is expected to be 88 degrees. Tuesday is expected to be 89 degrees, 90 degrees on Wednesday, 91 on Thursday. So high temperatures throughout the week, both here in the Treasure Valley and the mountains. We're going to be seeing sunshine throughout. Just going to be a gorgeous next couple days uh, with the heat as well. Yes, it will be. Thank you, Vasily. It is 620 on your Friday CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI. Bring it team traffic all morning long. Let's send it out to Ron O'Brien in the News Talk Traffic Center. Good morning, Ron. Good morning. Uh, doing just fine. Starting off all right. I-84 primary flow of morning traffic eastbound out of Canyon County is running light. Looking good. Uh, making the run between Boise and Mountain Home perhaps or Highway 16 up and over the hill between uh, Star and, and uh, Emmett. Everything quiet. Non-freeway spots running light too. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ronald Bryan. Thank you, Ron. When you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. Coming up on CBS 2 News this morning, President Biden battling coronavirus, the factors in his favor, and what may be putting him at risk. And later, Comic-Con back in full force after the pandemic puts things on hold. How businesses are benefiting from the convention's return. Be the first to know about breaking Idaho news and get help planning your day with the latest detailed weather forecast. Download the CBS2 mobile app today. Sponsored by Westmark Credit Union. This is CBS2 News this morning. 624 on your Friday. Welcome back. President Biden tested positive for coronavirus. His medical team says they're doing careful contract tracing now for anyone who's been working closely with him in the days, carefully tracking his vital signs for any type of serious symptoms. Medical reporter Liz Bonus has the latest. Hey there, hello to you. There are a number of steps President Biden has taken that are protective against COVID-19. And there are a few things that do raise his risk for complications from the virus. My husband tested positive for COVID. I talked to him just a few minutes ago. He's doing fine. He's feeling good. The president's wife, Jill Biden, still testing negative for COVID-19 today, saying... I am going to keep my schedule. I am, according to CDC guidelines, I am keeping masks. Those same CDC guidelines also recommend four shots of the COVID-19 vaccine for those who are President Biden's age. He is 79. He's had those shots. So he should be as protected as you can be from a vaccine standpoint. He's also likely getting Paxlovid protection as well. President Biden is now taking the antiviral medication. His office reports he has mild symptoms. 
So it should shorten the duration of his symptoms, so he maybe won't have a fever as, as long, maybe his cough will get better sooner. Infectious disease specialist Dr. Stephen Blatt of Ohio's TriHealth told me, however, what President Biden and those in recent days who were in close contact with him don't have going for them is this current virus variant. This BA5 is incredibly infectious. It also is able to better evade the antibodies which protect from the current vaccines. Because of that, it can take just about anyone down, vaccinated or not. All this, of course, why his medical team will continue to monitor his symptoms closely. I'm medical reporter Liz Bonus. Now back to you. Researchers at the University of California, San Diego, they're working on a new COVID vaccine, one that would be effective against all variants of the virus. They're using modified bacterial DNA in hopes of creating a more durable vaccine that could be taken as a pill by inhalation or other delivery methods. Well, Amazon making big moves into the healthcare space, the tech giant acquiring the primary care organization One Medical for nearly $4 billion. Amazon releasing in a statement that says it believes the partnership will, quote, help more people get better care when and how they need it. Still to come on CBS 2 News, getting ready for the spirit of Boise, what you can look forward to next month as balloons prepare to fill the sky. And here's a look at what's coming up tonight on CBS 2. After all your favorites, you can join us for CBS 2 News at 10 o'clock. And don't forget about our question of the day. Of course, we'll read more of your guesses coming up next. This morning on CBS 2 News, the final scheduled hearing on the January 6 Capitol attack wraps up. Why lawmakers say former President Trump didn't do enough to stop the assault. Plus, the search for the teen who fell into Lucky Peak Reservoir continues today. Why the recovery effort may take days, even as law enforcement brings in more help. And hoping to lend a hand to the Idaho Youth Ranch, how the fire at their Boise warehouse is now taking a major toll. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Happy Friday, folks. As the sun's coming up, 65 degrees here in Boise with some southwesterly wind about 9 miles per hour. But gorgeous morning here in Boise. And as for today, we'll see temperatures rise up to 97 degrees as the high dry and hot conditions throughout the day. And we'll see some gusty winds as well. And those hot temperatures should roll in this afternoon. Now, future cast showing us what we can expect for cloud cover over the next few days. And as you can see here in the Treasure Valley, little to no cloud cover expected throughout the next couple days. Going into Saturday, we may see some clouds in the southeastern part of the state. But as for the valley, we will see clear skies and high temperatures. Now, 97 degrees expected to be the high today in Boise, 98 over in Emmett. We'll see high 90s throughout the Treasure Valley. Over in Ontario, 100 degrees expected to be the high there. Up in the mountains, 85 degrees over in McCall, 83 in Stanley, and 91 degrees in Idaho City. Now, if you're going for a run today, it'll start heating up quick. 97 degrees expected as the high. Who another toasty one on tap. Thank you, Vasily. It is 631 on your Friday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI. We bring you team traffic all morning long. Looking good out there this morning. Not much to note. Looking like we will see smooth sailing for you for your Friday commute. A reminder, when you get in the car, turn on KBOI to 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all your team traffic updates. And you are looking live in Washington, D.C. this morning, where the House committee investigating the January 6 riot, it returned to primetime with a hearing centered around what then President Trump did and did not do the day of January 6th. Now, CBS's Serena Marshall reports from Capitol Hill. The Congressional Committee investigating the January 6th attack says President Trump ignored pleas to stop the violence. President Trump did not fail to act he chose not to act. In the primetime event, the eighth committee hearing, focusing on how Mr. Trump reacted to what was unfolding on Capitol Hill. He sent tweets that inflamed and expressed support for the desire of some to literally kill Vice President Mike Pence. 
The star witnesses two former White House aides who resigned that day, who, among other things, recalled seeing Mr. Trump's tweet that Vice President Mike Pence did not have the courage to overturn the election results. It looked like fuel being poured on the fire. It was essentially him giving the green light to these uh, people. The White House security official told the committee that agents assigned to Vice President Pence were starting to fear for their lives. There were calls to um, say goodbye to family members, so on and so forth. It was getting, for, for whatever the reason was on the ground, the VP detail thought that this was about to get very ugly. The committee also played outtakes from a previously unseen video the former president taped the following day. Congress has certified the results. I don't want to say the election's over. I just want to say Congress has certified the results without saying the election's over, okay? Following the hearing, committee member Jamie Raskin said the Justice Department, not Congress, will ultimately decide if criminal charges should be filed against Mr. Trump. Serena Marshall, CBS News, Capitol Hill. Now, Vice Chair Liz Cheney said the January 6th committee will be holding more hearings come fall, though no official dates have been set just yet. Well, President Trump, pardon me, President Biden tested positive for coronavirus during a routine screening Thursday morning. The White House doctor says he has mild symptoms that includes fatigue, a runny nose and the occasional dry cough. He was prescribed a five day course of Paxilovid. Now that's an antiviral drug that dramatically reduces the risk of severe COVID. Well, here in Idaho, Governor Brad Little doing more to fight fentanyl in the gem state. Up to $1 million will now be used to buy more roadside testing equipment and to start a new educational campaign. This is not a, a one solution problem. Uh, we've got to do everything from uh, significantly increasing awareness of the public, uh, particularly young people. Uh, we've got to fight back uh, against uh, the supply coming in. The governor says most of that supply comes from drug cartels. He launched Operation Esto Perpetua earlier this year to fight the threat of fentanyl and meth in our state. Now that effort includes law enforcement, families, and now a citizen action group. Turning to fire season this morning, the Moose Fire still growing in the Salmon Chalice National Forest. It's sitting at about 17 miles northwest of the town of Salmon and now at more than 20,000 acres. NIFC doesn't expect containment on this fire until they say the end of August. More than 500 wildland firefighter personnel are currently working on it. And some developing news overnight near the Moose Fire. A helicopter. It went down in the Salmon Chalice National Forest late last night. Now, Rotac Helicopter Services, they say two pilots were on board that aircraft. As of this morning, though, it's unclear if that aircraft was part of the crew working on the fire. There's also no word on the pilot's condition. CBS2 is trying to learn more about what exactly happened, and we will keep you updated. Well, switching gears to the 16 year old boy still missing after drowning in Lucky Peak Monday night. Deputies say he fell off a jet ski without a life jacket on. Law enforcement are now turning to an underwater search and a recovery expert to help. Now, this expert has found more than 130 bodies. Still, he says the search could take days. We can't find everyone because of certain conditions. Sometimes they're not even in the water. We've been really, really hoping that they radio us and tell us they found him. Now, the underwater search and recovery expert you just heard from, he says they're getting better information from law enforcement on where the boy might be. They say they believe he's fairly close to the shore. So if you do go there and see crews searching, they ask that you go to the opposite bank to give them space. Well, a devastating fire at the Idaho Youth Ranch warehouse, leaving behind burnt donations and big challenges ahead. Now, this distribution center, it's a lifeline for many of the programs that the Idaho Youth Ranch offers. And right now, that's put to a halt. What's happening here is really um, feeding our lifeline of services um, through processing and preparing donated goods to go to our thrift stores. People go to the thrift stores and they know that there's good deals there. They don't necessarily understand that when they purchase that shirt for $2, um, that, that that money is supporting all of these kids and their therapy and they're making a difference in changing lives. That's why the Idaho Youth Ranch needs your help now. CBS2 and News Talk KBOI, we're working to spread the word. You can donate money through youthranch.org. You can find a link on idahonews.com. You can also take physical donations, or the part of me, they cannot take physical donations right now because of course they can't store anything. But CBS2 will let you know when that does change.
All right, before we get to weather, the CBS2 team looking forward to the Spirit of Boise Balloon Classic, and we hope you are too. It's about a month away. If you're new to the Treasure Valley, it's our annual hot air balloon festival. They fill the sky over Labor Day weekend, and that Friday, there's Night Glow. That's a spectacular in Ann Morrison Park, where the balloons, they light up and give a show synchronized with music. That event kicks off Wednesday, August 31st. We've got all you need to know. Just head to IdahoNews.com. Oh, that view from the top getting me excited that it's only a month away. It's going to be your first time, Vasily. So, of course, we are going to be sending you up in a balloon, right? Oh, I mean, I am very scared of heights, so I don't know if that's going to be happening, but I'm going to enjoy watching those balloons from afar. You know, maybe we maybe we can try the tethered ride this year. We'll, we'll work you up to it as the years go on. How's that sound? Yeah, sounds good to me. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, talk to us about weather because a little cooler today, but still going to be toasty. Lots mm -hmm. of people going to be out enjoying, of course, the Boise River. Saw yeah, lots high, of floaters yesterday. High temperatures <laughs> here and high temperatures across the the western United States as well. We're seeing 100 degrees through uh, out a lot of different states, 102 over in Salt Lake City, 102 or 100 and 104 over in Northern California as well. High temperatures there. And then over in Reno, 95 degrees expected as the high there and up in Idaho, 97 degrees expected as the high here in Boise. Now, future cash showing us why we are seeing those high temperatures over the next few days and the past few days as well. And it's that high pressure resulting from the no low pressure up north into the south of us that's bringing in those high temperatures and also those clear skies we have been enjoying over the past few days. Now, the next few days, it's not going to be as hot this weekend as it's been over the past few days, warming up next or this upcoming Monday, and we'll see those near 100 degree temperatures or 100 degree temperatures coming up next week. And we'll see some gusty winds through this weekend. Those winds are creating a red flag warning from Idaho City all the way to southeastern Idaho. That is just a critical fire warning throughout those parts of Idaho. Make sure you stay safe out there, folks, because you don't want to start a wildfire. Now, 97, 98 degrees expected through Treasure Valley, 100 degrees expected in Ontario and up in the mountains, 85 degrees expected in McCall and 83 in Stanley. Now, over the next few days, we'll see it drop to 96 this weekend, but going till Tuesday, we'll see it gradually increase leading up to 100 degrees on Tuesday. Ooh, all right, thank you, Vasily. 640 on your Friday, CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI. Bring a team traffic all morning long. A beautiful view out there this morning. Let's send it over to Ron O'Brien in the News Talk Traffic Center. Good morning, Ron. Good morning, Sarah. Thank you. Good morning, folks. Getting out the door. Uh, Fridays can be a little better than usual, and that's uh, holding true so far. Very little, if any, merge slowing. 84, for example, those interchanges uh, beyond 10 mile, a little bit near Meridian Road where that on-ramp comes in. And uh, injury crash reported in Canyon County, Middleton Road in Linden. And it doesn't look like much of a delay there. Maybe a little local holdup, but not a uh, major issue. Traffic is getting through. Helping uh, from the News Talk KBOI traffic studio, I'm Ronald Bryan. Thank you, Ron. When you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all your team traffic updates. All right, folks, it is time for our question of the day. The question is 40% of people say they prefer to put this topping on their ice cream. So a little less than 50%. Vasily, are you sticking with your guess? Uh, I'm actually going to change it. I thought about fruit, but I saw those sauce guesses and I was like, you know what? I think caramel <laughs> might be a good one. I love caramel on my ice cream, so I'll pick that one. Getting a little lost in the sauce this morning. All right, my guess, maraschino cherries just because it's a little less than 50%. I know a lot of people maybe don't like them. Some people really love them like myself. All right, let's see what our folks have to say. Melissa, nuts. Yep. Great one. Chopped nuts, always a good mm -hmm. thing to put on your ice cream. Deb says caramel sauce. Good guess, Deb. Hopefully Ugh. we get it right this time. Guys, I don't like how hungry this is making me this morning. All right, Lisa says whipped cream. Ooh. Vasily, homemade whipped cream or whipped cream out of a can? Homemade whipped cream. Every oh, yes, time. okay, this man, yes, okay. <laughs> that's the right answer. Okay, well, well, maybe not the right answer. We will let you know the actual right answer. You still have about 15 minutes to guess. Again, get your answers in on our Facebook page and Twitter. And of course, we will read you the answer right before CBS This Morning. Still to come on CBS 2 News, we may see more supply chain trouble soon. Why truckers are blocking a major U.S. port this morning. This is CBS 2 News This Morning. 
645 on your Friday. Welcome back. Turning to the latest on the war in Ukraine this morning. A deal to restart Ukraine's grain exports is set to be signed later today. Now, Turkey's president says Russia and Ukraine will sign the deal to reopen Ukraine's Black Sea ports in Istanbul. Now, the deal will reportedly enable Ukraine to export millions of tons of grain and other agricultural products. Ukraine's exports have been stuck in the Black Sea ports because of the ongoing war, continuing to threaten global supply of grain. Well, here in the U.S. this morning, protesters and truck drivers continuing to disrupt operations at a port of Oakland. That's the world's ninth busiest port. Now, they're opposed to a California law about to take effect that will force them to give up their status as independent contractors. Local union leaders say the new law could give truckers more rights. However, protesters say it'll force them out of their independent lifestyle. If implemented, your jobs will be gone. As independent workers, you will not have a job unless you work under some company. Officials say if this goes on much longer, there could be a fresh set of supply chain nightmares to deal with. Now, the Port of Oakland handles about 98,000 shipping containers each month. Right now, those containers are being pushed to other California ports. However, the concern is that other independent truckers may join the movement and shut down those ports as well. Well, it's day two of Comic-Con down in San Diego, California. This massive convention brings in people from across the U.S. Now, Rocio De La Fe lets us in on some of the fun and explains how businesses are benefiting from the convention's impact. It's the return of Comic-Con to San Diego. The atmosphere is electric, you know, and uh, we're ready. We're, we're back in the mix, so we're happy. Joe Tirado and his family of villains made it into town for the event all the way from New Jersey. It's amazing. It shows that we're going back to normalcy, that everyone's back out here. We're celebrating. The costumes are out. The cosplayers are out. And it's just, just a great atmosphere. And just like him, hundreds of thousands of people are descending into downtown San Diego for the four-day event. There's a lot going on. There's a lot to be excited about. I'm super stoked to be back. It's been, it's been incredible as usual. <laughs> Businesses throughout the Gaslam Quarter are set to benefit tremendously from the large crowds. Allison McKay at Cafe Sevilla says staff have been preparing for this moment for months. We weren't expecting this many people and we're actually really excited and really happy for it because it brings a lot of business to us, especially after the pandemic, and it just makes it even better to be around, you know, be in downtown. Gaslam Quarter social media manager Alma Asensio says Comic-Con is one of the biggest events of the year for businesses. For our second year Eve, basically for us, Comic-Con brings a lot of business. Our merchants are happy. Uh, we have a lot of offers going on. We just uh, are excited and our businesses are just happy to have this impact from like globally, nationally and from Teach Tijuana coming over and just, you know, having fun here in Gasm Quarter and having fun at Comic Con. Yes, you don't like that guy. All right. Well, <laughs> It's going to be a beautiful weekend ahead. Lots of sunshine is in store and picture perfect as you're stepping out the door this morning. It is Friday. We made it. Tell me more, Vasily. Yeah, it's going to be a hot one again today. Not as hot as previous days. Right now, it's definitely cooler this morning. 65 degrees here in Boise over in Caldwell. It is 58 degrees right now. So we're looking at the mid to low 60s and high 50s throughout the Treasure Valley right now. Over in Ontario, 74 degrees right now and up in the mountains. 52 in McCall and 35 degrees in Stanley. Now, when you head out the door this morning, it's going to start getting hotter throughout the day. 82 degrees by 11 o'clock. That'll jump up to 93 by 3 o'clock, leading up to our high today of 97 degrees. Now, 97 to 98 throughout much of the Treasure Valley. 97 down Mountain Home. 100 degrees over in Ontario. And then up in the mountains, 85 degrees expected to be the high here in McCall. Over in Stanley, 83 degrees and 91 degrees expected in Idaho City as the high today. Now, for the extended forecast, today through the weekend we'll sit around the 96, 97 degree mark for the highs, and then we'll start heating up as we jump into next week. Monday is going to be 98 degrees, then we'll jump into that triple digit range for Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. 100 to 99 degrees expected in the middle of the week next week. And then over in the mountains, Friday is expected to be the coolest day of the week, and then 
then we'll start gradually increasing as the days go on. Saturday, Sunday, expect to be in 85, 86, and then 88 degrees on Monday, 89 degrees on Tuesday, leading up all the way to 91 degrees expected on Thursday. So sunny and hot temperatures both in the mountains and the Treasure Valley expected. All right, thank you, Vasily. 650 on your Friday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring a team traffic all morning long. A beautiful view out there this morning. Let's send it over to News Talk KBOI's Traffic Center with Ron O'Brien. Hey, Ron, how's it looking out there? Hi, Sarah. Thanks. Uh, not looking bad at all. Fridays, of course, can be better than usual. That has been the case so far. There's been minimal congested traffic that will show up now and then briefly at uh, spots like Meridian Road where the on-ramp comes in. Here comes the sun, though, and the uh, sun glare can be pretty bad. Some spots, for example, as you come around that bend in I-84 near the Eagle Interchange or as you uh, hit the uh, connector 184 coming east, areas like that is where it's especially bad, so watch out. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ronald Bryan. Thank you, Ron. When you do get in the car, make sure you turn your dial to 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all your team traffic updates. Coming up on CBS 2 News, a teen's quick thinking may have saved a man's life. Why a ranch hand is now being hailed as a hero. This is CBS 2 News this morning. 6.53, now 6.54 on your Friday. A teen in Tomball, Texas being hailed as a hero after saving a man's life. Now Zach Tawatari shares how the, he jumped into action during a messy situation. Take a look. Sitting on some 60 acres in Tomball. Oh, you see that calf along that fence? Up Ranch there? manager Bill Rowan fans has been baling hay or steering cattle. Run them in here and bring them through the chute. Here at Cedarbrook Farms for nearly 40 years. Since about 84. But just last weekend, he says he was performing minor surgery on a calf like he'd done numerous times. And I've never had a problem before. Using a razor sharp scalpel. Except this time. And while I was working from the back here, the calf moved its leg and hit my arm, and my arm came over and slit right across here. A gash. About that long. Just like I was trying to cut my thumb off. He thought some paper towels might help. And I realized my towels were already soaked through, and as I went to get another set of towels, took my hand off, and then it sprayed like that. But luckily for Bill, he had a hand, specifically his new ranch hand. High school junior Shane Stevens, who realized if you're squirting blood six inches, you have cut a major artery. So Shane, who trains with special forces, grabbed a first aid kit from his truck and quickly applied a tourniquet. Well, don't panic. Panic creates chaos. After Shane drove him to a nearby Memorial Hermann satellite, Bill was transported by ambulance to the hospital's Woodlands location, where he says a hand surgeon stitched his artery back together. Did it hurt? Not at all. But without Shane's quick thinking, Bill says it could have been a much different story. You know, it only takes three to five minutes and you're bleeding out. It was Shane's first time using the tourniquet. Grab this, snug it up. And for Bill, luckily, not his last steer. That was a goner. A heroic act, he says, that shows the future, too, is in good hands. This kid here saved my life. Oh, it's an amazing story. Well, CBS2 and CapEd Credit Union, we're teaming up to help the Salvation Army provide school supplies to kids in the Treasure Valley and Magic Valleys. Now, we know students need things like backpacks, binders, folders, crayons, glue, pens, pencils, colored pencils. The list is endless. Now, donations, they can be made at any CapEd Credit Union location in the Treasure Valley or in Twin Falls. We do have a link to donate on our website. You can just head to IdahoNews.com. Hard to think back to schools almost upon us, Vasily. All right, well, it's time for our question of the day. 40% of people say they prefer to put this on their ice cream. The answer. Hot fudge. Another topping. You're just close. Can't complain with that. All right, guys, have a good one. We'll see you back here at 11. Take the news with you on the radio. News Talk KBOI. And for news and information 24 hours a day, click on IdahoNews.com. CBS Mornings is coming up next. And watch for your next local newscast on CBS 2 today at 11. Connect with CBS 2 for local news and weather on IdahoNews.com.